Now a prisoner of the Colossa, Daenerys is brought before their leader, Karl Moro, enduring remarks about her appearance from her captors. Out of jealousy, Moro's wives suggest killing Daenerys, though he repeatedly ignores them. Daenerys reveals her identity, but Moro laughs off her titles, saying she is nothing more than his bed slave. Daenerys refuses, revealing herself as the widow of Khal Drogo. As it is forbidden for a Khal to sleep with a widowed Khaleesi, Moro has a change of heart, cuts her free and promises no one will touch her. A grateful Daenerys promises to reward him with more horses if she is returned to Marine, but Moro informs her that she will be escorted to the temple of the Dosh Kaleen in Vyze Dothrak, a home for other widowed Khaleesi. Daenerys eventually returns to Vyze Dothrak and arrives at the temple of the Dosh Kaleen. Inside, the other widowed Khaleesi strip her of her clothing and jewelry and give her traditional Dothraki clothing. She attempts to intimidate them with her name and titles, but their leader lectures her on how Daenerys believed Khal Drogo would conquer the world with her at his side, just as they all believed the same of their own husbands before they were slain. Daenerys is then informed that she had violated Dothraki law by not immediately joining the Dosh Kaleen after Drogo died, and her fate will be decided soon by the Khals at the Kala Vejvan. The High Priestess of the Dosh Kaleen introduces Daenerys to the other Khaleesi, some of whom hate her for not being of pure blood. During her time in captivity, Daenerys befriends a young Khaleesi named Ornella, a Lazarene girl taken from her village at the age of twelve. The High Priestess gives Daenerys permission to relieve herself outside but sends Ornella to escort her. The pair are accosted by Jura and Dario, who have traveled to Vise Dothrak to rescue her. She tells them to cancel their rescue plan and proposes a plan of her own. At the Kala Vejvan, Daenerys tells the gathered Khals that none of them are fit to lead the Dothraki. Daenerys declares that she will lead them herself. After a pause, Moro and the Khals burst into laughter. Daenerys reminds them that her husband, in the same temple in which they all now sit, declared that he would lead a Dothraki army across the narrow sea to retake the Iron Throne for his Khaleesi and that all the Khals have done since the raid and plunder of villages in view of any meaningful conquest. Disgusted with her insolence, Moro declares that she will be raped by each of the Khals, then by all of their blood riders, and then, if she is still alive, by their horses. Daenerys's broad smile deepens at his threats and replies that they won't have to follow her because this is where they will die. She knocks over the braziers at the center of the temple, setting the entire building aflame. The Khals desperately attempt to escape the rapidly spreading fire, only to find the temple's only door barred, the bodies of the two Kaleen guarding it lying dead outside. Moro tries to confront Daenerys a final time, but she pushes the last brazier on him, completing the conflagration. As the flames climb higher, the Dosh Kaleen and Kalasas gather in confusion. Eventually, the doors collapse and Daenerys emerges, naked and unburnt. Many of the assembled bows immediately, with the High Priestess and the rest of the Dosh Kaleen following. Jorah and Dario move to the front of the crowd and bow last. The next day, Daenerys formally thanks Jorah for saving her life, but still remarks that he has been banished twice and returned both times, so she is left with a dilemma on what to do with him. She is shocked to learn he has grayscale, feeling responsible for his condition. After Jorah confesses his love to her and prepares to leave, Daenerys tells him to find a cure, but she will need him by her side when she sits on the Iron Throne. On the road back to Marine, Daenerys stops to outline her plan to Dario for when she returns to the city, asking how many ships would be needed to sail the Dothraki and Unsullied. Dario's estimated figure of a thousand troubles Daenerys, as no one owns a fleet that large. Though the Sellsword believes she is a conqueror more than anything else, Daenerys states that she takes what is hers. The conversation ends when Daenerys senses something in the distance and rides ahead to investigate. A few moments later, she returns on the back of a fully healed Drogon, declaring all of the Kalasa as her blood riders instead of selecting a select few. She then vows to lead them to conquer Westeros. As Marine is being besieged by a fleet of the Master's ships, Daenerys finally returns to the city, arriving at the Great Pyramid's balcony on Drogon. She is originally mistaken to be a threat from above by Tyrion, Missandei and Grey Worm, but her identity is revealed when several Unsullied discover her on the balcony adjacent to the council room. The following day, Daenerys and Tyrion discuss a plan to deal with the slaver fleet currently besieging the city. Daenerys declares her plans to return their cities to the dirt, but Tyrion pleads for diplomacy, begging her not to become like her father. 
Daenerys and her entourage then meet with the slave masters Razdal Mo Eraz, Belicho Pinemian, and Yezanzo Kagas, representing Yunkai, Volantis, and Astapor respectively. The masters discuss their terms of surrender, announcing they will allow Daenerys and Tyrion to leave the city, while Masande and the Unsullied will be sold back into slavery, and the dragons will be slaughtered. Daenerys rejects their terms, informing them they aren't meeting for her surrender, but for theirs. The masters are bewildered by Daenerys's unwavering confidence until Drogon lands beside her. She mounts her dragon and the two take flight, while Rhaegal and Viserion break free from the catacombs of the Great Pyramid, all three dragons finally reunited. Daenerys then orders her dragons to burn the slave master's ships, tilting the negotiating table in her favor. Meanwhile, Grey Worm executes Razdal and Belicho but spares Yezan to spread tidings of her power. Dario leads the Daenerys's Colossa to slaughter the sons of the Harpy, ending the threat of the slave masters and their Harpy allies. Later, Daenerys and Tyrion meet with the ironborn Yara and Theon Greyjoy. Yara offers to provide 100 ships to Daenerys if, in return, she helps them defeat their uncle Euron Greyjoy and recognizes the independence of the Iron Islands. Daenerys accepts Yara's offer of an alliance and observes that both of their fathers left the world worse than they found it, but Daenerys and Yara are going to leave it better than they found it. She demands that Yara recognize her claim to queenship of the Seven Kingdoms and tells her, no more reaving, roving, raiding, or raping. Yara protests this is the Ironborn's way of life, but Daenerys is firm. Yara reluctantly agrees to her terms, and the two queens make a pact. Dario reports to Daenerys that the fleet is nearly ready. He's eager to see how the Dothraki do on the open sea. Daenerys informs Dario he won't be joining them, which Dario interprets to mean that he will go on to seize Casterly Rock to cut off the Lannister retreat. Daenerys clarifies that Dario is to stay in Marine with the Second Sons, to keep the peace until the city can safely choose its own ruler. Furthermore, she cannot bring her lover to Westeros, as marriage is still her most valuable bargaining chip when considering new alliances. Dario begs her to take him, pointing out that kings have mistresses, and queens should be no different, but Daenerys stands firm. Dario realizes that Tyrion convinced her to leave him, but admits that it is a good move politically. He muses that no woman can take her place, although Daenerys is sure he will have many more lovers. Daenerys assures him that she'll leave specific instructions for him to follow in governing the newly renamed Bay of Dragons. After Dario leaves, Daenerys goes to see Tyrion, who tries his best to console her. Daenerys thanks him, but admits that she's not upset about Dario, rather, she was frightened that she was able to easily dismiss someone who loves her unconditionally. Tyrion says that Dario wasn't the first man to love Daenerys, and won't be the last. Daenerys then turns the topic to Tyrion's rule of Marine in her absence. He responds that he gave up on believing in himself or in anyone and anything else, but that he believes in her. Touched, Daenerys gives Tyrion a pin she had made for him, the brooch of the hand of the queen. Tyrion, struck with emotion, proceeds to kneel in front of her some time later. Daenerys leads her armada to Westeros. With the liberation of Slaver's Bay complete, Daenerys sails the summer sea, her three dragons, Drogon, Rhaegal, and Viserion fly over her assembled armada, composed of the horde of Dothraki, Ironborn, Dornishmen, Reachmen, and unsullied fleet of House Targaryen. Daenerys, clad in Targaryen black, stands on the deck of the flagship with Tyrion, Missandei, and Varys, looking ahead to either the gift of a new ally, or another massive war within House Targaryen for the Iron Throne.